Everybody here. Turn with us in First Timothy. And I promise this is scripture has been on my mind before he testified when he was with this and say sing on her, yeah, but I'm not, I promise. Alright, it says for bodily exercise problems little. But godliness <laughs> is profitable unto all things. Having promise of life that now is and that which is to come. Now, going on down in verse 14, he said, Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given to thee by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. Now that word profit, that, that's, that's really on my mind. Uh, verse, uh, verse 8 says, For God be here for profit is little, but godliness is profitable into all things. That word profit is really on my, on my mind tonight. Uh, last verse says, Take heed to thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in, those, in so doing, thou shalt... Doing, uh, doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the reading of the word. And I just pray, Lord, that you just give us exactly what we stand in need of tonight. And we know, Lord, that you know, uh, Lord, our needs, and God, you know what we, what we stand in need of. And we just pray, Lord, that you just give us every word tonight. And we thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. The word profit has really been on my mind, and, and, and you know, I guess most people, uh, most people that that think about decisions, whether it be a job, whether it be a decision of, of anything else, you think, well, how does this profit me, right? Uh, well, most people are like, what's in it for me? How is this going to benefit me? And I thought about what the scripture speaks about for bodily exercise profit little. It doesn't say nothing, but it says little. Uh, and I believe the reason why that Paul stated it this way is this outer man is going to perish. We begin to die the day we were born, right? And this outward man, uh, as much as we try to take care of it, I believe God gives us gives us common sense to take care of ourselves. I'm trying to do better myself. But as Paul said, it, it, it probably exercise profits little, but godliness, it says, but godliness prof is profitable unto all things. And so uh, I thought, thought about what, how serving God and, and taking God's Word every day and exercising our faith there's things in spiritually speaking that God requires us to exercise, and that's exercise our faith in the Lord. And uh, faith that is dead, uh, uh, faith without works is dead being alone, right? That's what James uh, uh, covered, and, and how that it's uh, very important that we, that we put faith to action, that we exercise our faith. Uh, Paul also addressed in Hebrews chapter number 12 that it's very important that we exercise uh, the, the chastisement of the Lord, right? Because, uh, uh, let's just read it real quick. It says here in, in Hebrews chapter number 12, speaking about chastening, uh, verse 11, Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, it, uh, afterward it yieldeth the peaceful fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So it is profitable to us to when we exercise off the chastisement, learn from our mistakes. Amen. It profits us. Amen. To listen to God. When God chastens us, it's just like God whooping us and correcting us like our, our, our parents did, right? It, but it's for our own good and it's for our profit. Amen. 
uh, that, that uh, we may yield the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Amen? Uh, it's profitable to live right. Amen? Amen. To the world, it, 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 it seems like a burdensome life to them. Well, well, you can't do nothing, but it is profitable, amen, to live the sanctified, consecrated life to the Lord, amen? amen. amen. I think about, you think about the, the alternative, the life that we did live in the world, amen? That's a burdensome life. The Bible says the ways of a transgressor is hard, amen? Life is hard in general, but ain't it a lot easier when you have the Lord to lean upon? When you have God uh, and put your faith and trust in the Lord and you have peace with God, the Word can't offer that. Amen? Amen. But, when, but it is profitable to trust in Jesus. The Bible speaks about there in the book of Matthew, uh, chapter number 16 and verse number 26. It says, For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So what profit a man though he gain the whole world? A lot of people it is so focused upon gaining profit in, 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 in this life and, and not only you know what, what, uh, what they can gain monetarily. But let me say this, even as God's people, we can get wrapped up in making money. Man, we can get so wrapped up and consumed and we have to make money. And we have to have this, and I realize we got to have money to, to, uh, to pay the bills and to provide for our family. I understand that. But, but if we're so consumed that we feel like that, that we have to have it to be happy, amen, uh, we, we, we've got our priorities out of line, amen. Luke 15, let's find that real quick. In the book of Luke, uh, let's see here, Luke 12, 15. And he said unto them, Mr. Jesus speaking, take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life can consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. Amen? Beware of covetousness. Desiring to have what everybody else has got. Amen? One of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not covet. Amen? So uh, when we think about what, what somebody else has got, and what, uh, you know, somebody else's spouse, or somebody else's, uh, the Bible even says the, the man or maid servant, or, or, or possessions, whether it be their house or their car, or, or something they, you know, other people say, I want that. I want what they got. Uh, and and, and we, we, it's bad to covet it and, and think about, well, well, I want what they've got. I, I, want, I want that that lifestyle or whatever. And we get so wrapped up in what everybody else has got and we forget about what God has already blessed us with. Amen? But when you think about it, there's more to, to being happy. And, if, and, and I believe this is, uh, this is uh, when God... Uh, when we mature in the faith, when we mature in the faith, you know, uh, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought, of the, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Spiritual maturity will cause you to look at things a whole lot differently. It don't take a whole lot to make you happy. Don't take a whole lot of money to make you happy. Don't take a lot of materialistic things to make you happy when you mature in the faith. When you've got the peace of God and the Holy Spirit of God guiding you and leading you, you don't need nothing there. And, and even though that we, we know we've got to we got to make money to pay the bills, but what I'm saying is that the world it, it is so wrapped up, just like the rich man uh, that his ground brought, brought forth plenty, and he said, "I have no more uh, barns to bestow my goods. I'm going to no more room to bestow my fruits. I'm going to tear down my barns and I'm going to build greater." And then I'll say, "So take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry." So he was looking for materialistic things to make him satisfied. But God said, Thou fool, that this night thy soul shall be required of thee. So what matters most is your condition with God and, and your what profits you is salvation in the Lord. Amen? 
What profits you is your growth in the Lord and your, matu uh, and, and your maturity in God. It's very important that we be spiritually mature. You've heard me preach on uh, John Grace Christians. Johnson Grace that grows up in the gardens and I've got it in my taters and, and it'll, it'll grow right through a tater. And, and, and it's got, they got taproot, man. Uh, I mean, it's hard to kill Johnson Grace. I would to God that we'd have Johnson Grass Christian. Amen. Mow it down. Cut us down. We're still growing for the Lord. Amen. But then you've got your cucumbers and uh, you, you, you watermelon plants and uh, cantaloupe plants and, and uh, even squash and, and uh, zucchini plants. You move them in the heat of the day. And they'll, will, they'll die by sunset. They can't take the heat. They can't take when, when somebody ruffles them. Amen? And God, it, it, we're not profiting in our Christian life with our chip on our shoulder. Amen? And so, we're, 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 uh, we're not getting now with anything in, in our Christian life with, with what's in it for me. And if you offend me, I'm out. I'll take my ball and go home. I'm not playing anymore. But when we become rooted and grounded in the, in the Word of God, amen, get off the meat, our milk, and get on the meat, amen. I, there was a time that Paul, he said, I, they, he said, well, the time I ought to fed you with meat, I had to I, I, I give you milk because you were still on the milk. And it's speaking of uh, a spiritual maturity, right? But it profits us to, to have knowledge of God's Word and to dig deeper in God's Word and be strong in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Because the, the wiles of the devil is, I mean, raging every day. And friend, uh, if it just takes just anything to rock your boat, something's going to rock your boat. Uh, uh, sooner or later, it... But the thing of it is, when we are rooted and, and, and grounded in God, and when we when we have exercised our faith in the Lord, and godliness is profitable. Amen. Let's go back to it in in uh, there in First Timothy. But godliness, in verse eight, is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. Best of Goodman, thank you for the happy Goodman family. She made a mistake at one time. Uh, she said, I'm on my way to heaven and I'm enjoying the trip. Now, this scripture here, it said, in having the promise of, life, of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Not only can I enjoy, not only is salvation going to profit me when I get to heaven and hear him say, well done. Amen. Amen. But <clears throat> salvation is profiting me now. I'm enjoying my salvation now. And if, if your Christian life is a burden and, and you're not enjoying your salvation, there's something wrong there. Because it's not God's will for us to be burdened. Amen. He said, let not your heart be troubled, and neither let it be afraid. So God, God wants us to be happy in this life. Amen? And not, all, and not, all, and not every day is going to be rejoicing and shouting, and, 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 and not every day is going to be just we're going to be on the mountaintop. That, that's, that's just not life, is it? Life is full of things, and, and it's full of heartache. And, and well, Job said it best when he said, Man that is born of a woman's few days are full of trouble. But the thing about it is, the good outweighs the bad when you're a child of God. Amen. I'm profiting tonight trusting Jesus. We think about what all we give the Lord, what all I've done for the Lord. Well, I look at it like this. What little I've done for the Lord, He's done way more for me. Amen. 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 But you know, you think about Paul, when he was talking about his, his life that he lived before he was saved. He 
He said, I count it all loss for the, for the cause of Christ, for, to, the, for the gain, basically for the profit that I have gained in the Lord. I mean, you got peace in your heart. That's better than money in the bank. Man, it profited us. Because listen, you, you think about this. Your body's going to die. And, and here I believe God gives us sins. God gives us common sense to take care of yourself. Right? I mean, revelings and, and excessiveness is, is, is biblical. Amen? We, we need to have good sense, don't we, with our body. And uh, because it is the temple. Uh, of the Lord, right? We need to take care of this temple. But no matter how long, you know, much we try to take care of it, you know, it's not going to live forever. But I believe that's why Paul said, but godliness and righteous profit. It's profit. Uh, not only have the promise of, of, of now, but that which is to come as well. And when we uh, when we look at, at the benefits, I referred to this scripture uh, the other day when David said, oh, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name, and forget not all his benefits. There's benefits, and it's profitable to us to trust in Jesus and to be consistent. It, be consistent in your faith. Don't just be just like a just like a wave talks to and fro. That's a double-minded man. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. But it'll profit you to get said. You've heard me say many times, know what you believe, believe what you know, and, and know what you believe. And, let, and, and, and here's the thing. And make sure the Bible backs everything you believe up. Amen. Not tradition, not what, not what Grandma and Grandpa said, or maybe the, the, your favorite preacher that, that you've really got a whole lot of confidence in. Well, that's what he believes, and that's the way I'm going to believe. Man can be wrong. God's Word is never wrong. It never will be wrong. So God's Word, it, it, it will profit you. All Scripture is profitable, the Bible says. Amen. So when we when we think about it, when we hear uh, people and, and you know people might have good theories and good ideas and and uh, and, and, and and maybe uh, it might be that uh, uh, people might it might sound good but the Bible may not back that up right Second uh, Timothy three sixteen that, that's the scripture. That, this now come to my mind. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. That's good enough for me. Amen. And it's profitable. Is that word profitable again? Profitable. What's profit mean? I, read, I, I wrote it down in the Webster Dictionary. It says a valuable return and gain. Amen. A valuable return and gain. Look how much. The Bible. Let's think about we can let me live as a shout on a Wednesday night right here. If we think about how valuable return and gain we have got from God's infallible, inerrant word. Amen. That says never change and never will. Amen. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be perfect. I mean, that means complete, right? Thoroughly furnished into all good works. Amen. You say, preacher, that's speaking about, about you, about preachers, and the man of God. You can be a man of God. A godly man. Amen. You, and not only is this, it was this uh, writing to Timothy that, that he may be, you know, uh, perfect, thoroughly furnished in all good works through the Word of God, that, that he meditate upon God's Word. But, uh, uh, but every one of us can we be a godly person. Amen. In order to be godly, we must have instruction. And, and, and instructions in God's Word. Amen. And, and all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. So it's not man's opinion. It's about what God says. Yes. And it's profit for doctrine. People may look like, look at doctrine, but 
doctrine. That's like the free, free will Baptist, Baptist. Let me say this about denomination. <coughs> denomination is man made. But God's word is forever set in heaven. Let God be true and every man a liar. God says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Man, when you read God's word, the spiritual mind, let God, God give you that understanding spiritually. Amen. Uh, I, I don't believe that. Uh, I don't believe that God will show somebody one thing and somebody else another. Amen. But uh, when we let God speak to us and let God guide us, it will profit us. You know, we gain, you know, every year, you know, you, know, you work, you, you get uh, you get your W-2, and it just shows you what you profit. Maybe at the end of this year, let's think about what we, how we profited from glory. Hey, we don't have to wait till Christmas. We can, we can do that now. It's a good time to think about it. From January to July, right here. Half the year's gone. What have we profited in the Lord? Have we grew in the Lord? Have we have we learned some things? Has God put things in perspective? You know, these these seven months, well, actually it's been seven months. The pandemic's been since March. So you think about just these these uh, four months, roughly, that this world has seen the pandemic that, you know, in our generation, maybe, uh, I think 1918, they had the Spanish flu that was kind of similar, that, that, that took out a lot of people, made a lot of people sick. Uh, but in, in, our, in our lifetime, in our generation, we've never seen anything like this. But... I believe as God's people that we all have, have, have done some double take to our own lives and our Christian lives. And not only in our Christian lives, but in our lifestyle. Thinking, hey, you know what? This is a good time, good opportunity to spend time with family. It's a good time to, to get my priorities back in, in, in order. Right? And not be so busy, but how that God has, you know, God took away some things that made us busy and and occupied our time, and, and, and you know, let's think about how we've profited. And if we've not profited, it ain't God's fault. If you've not profited from God, it sure ain't His fault. He's not going to force Himself. He's not going to. He's not going to make you uh, read your Bible. He's not going to make you pray and talk to Him. But I promise you, it will profit you to have a close walk with God. I believe old Enoch that walked with God. He was walking with God and heard the song of Living the Canyon sing. God just said, Well, Enoch, we're closer to my house than we are to yours. Why don't you just come on home with me? But you think about that close walk with him, it, it profited me. But the Bible says that he had a testimony that he pleased God. Amen. So it's profitable to. Take God's word and learn God's word and, and grow in the Lord. And what you have in the Lord will never be able, nothing will be able to take that away from you. Man, that's why the Bible says later sets up treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not corrupt, where thieves do not break through and steal. So, what you have in here, nobody can take, take that away. Possessions, people can steal. Right? But what you have in the Lord, nobody can take care of you. I'm thankful. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for reading your word. And thank you, God, for the word of God that you've given us. I just pray tonight that you'd help us. Help us, Lord, to focus on profiting in you. And, Lord, more so monetary. Because, Lord, there, there is life. Is, there's more to life than the almighty dollar. And the, and the, and the, 
the Bible even tells us the love of money is the root of all evil. It's not money, it's the love of it is the root of all evil. Help us, Lord, to Lord, focus on profiting in you. God, we can be rich in you. Lord, rich in knowledge, rich in wisdom, rich in the, in the seasoning of the Holy Spirit of God that's upon our life. We love you, we thank you, Jesus. Amen.